Welcome to episode number 157 of What Does This Button Do? It's an educational show about smartphones and tablets with us, Geeks on Tour. Today's beginner's lesson is about sending photos from your phone. But first, we have a quick tip. What do you have there, Chris? The quick tip is about watching videos on YouTube and that there's a setting to speed them up or slow them down. So on, on YouTube, sometimes you want it to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> and you have three choices, one and a quarter speed, one and a half or double speed and vice versa, sometimes the speaker is going too fast and you want to slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> and that's still a speed setting. You just go to the other side. You have three quarter speed, half speed, or one quarter speed. And uh, on the computer, you do it by clicking the little gear. But I want to show you on a phone. <clears throat> so. Ooh. Focus. Here is a YouTube video. Not better. And it's playing. Hi, this is Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour. And you hear and me I talking. I'm going to do a factory Just reset speed on my iPhone 7 Plus and record the whole process you tap here, so that see. you can see how it works. Okay. You tap the three dot menu in the upper right on the phone and there's playback speed right there. And one and a half, I can usually listen to pretty good and it makes it go faster. Works. Why am I doing that? Well, this is a two year old phone and I am constantly getting messages that it's full. I delete what I can, but it's just too much. But now it's just too fun to try it at double speed. It's work to keep up with that. It's slowing down and it even just crashes, hangs up sometimes. So a factory reset should clear it completely out and start over like it's a brand. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really want to get through a video quickly, uh, there's the playback speed. And then on the other side, you can slow it down. And I want, and I want a 128 gigabyte. I think she's been <laughs> drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Too funny. So that, that can be fun, but the, the one and a half speed, I really have found useful to get through a video faster. Right. Right. I list, I used that just yesterday, I think, to watch a video. Mm -hmm. No, maybe it was Friday. Anyway, so I could catch up on what was happening <laughs> where I was supposed <laughs> to be at a certain point in time. Yeah. All right. I guess it's time. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim, and here together with my wife, Chris, we are Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your iPhone or your Android tablet? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks who teach, and we think the best way to learn is in bite-sized pieces on a regular basis. So that's why we came up with this, with this show. We call it a weekly show. It might not be every week, but it's still a weekly show. We pick a different topic and go into a little bit of depth, always trying not to forget the beginners. So that's why we have this beginning lesson in every episode. All of our material is collected on our website at geeksontour.com. And where are we now, Chris? We're at home in our home studio and able to go to our home Toastmasters Club. That's always fun. We love our Toastmasters Club. If you don't know about Toastmasters, it's a way to get practice with public speaking. Okay. Our beginner's lesson today is sending photos from your phone. And Chris has some beginner's lesson stuff for you. What do you have? So that's just it. What, for, what are we talking about? Believe it or not, there are so many different ways of sending photos. I mean, most people just learn one way and that's what they always do. So they figure, what's the, how can you have a whole lesson? Believe it or not, we could 
you know, teach a couple days probably. But so we're limiting what we're talking about today. First of all, we're not going to be talking about Google Photos. That is my favorite way of sharing photos. But we want to deal with people who don't use Google Photos and just have the basic um, things on their phone. Uh, if you want to learn about the Google Photos, see chapter 10 in Mrs. Geek's Guide to Google Photos. Also, episode 143 and 62 of this show, we dealt with shared albums. So we're just talking about you take one or two photos and you want to send it to one or two people, not a whole shared album. Although I might not be able to resist at least mentioning Google Photos <laughs> at some time during the, yeah, today. Yeah, I think you have a hard time not mentioning Google <laughs> Photos. Mrs. Geek. <laughs> so there's three basic ways, direct phone to phone, texting and email. And for the direct phone to phone, we've recorded a couple videos. So do we need to go to the backup yeah, method? I think so, so on an iPhone, it's called AirDrop. And here is our video about how that works. Hi, this is Chris Cole with Geeks on Tour. And this tutorial is about using AirDrop to transfer a photo directly from one iOS device, like this iPhone, to another iOS device like this iPad. Now this happens to be my iPhone and my iPad, but imagine that I took a photo with this iPhone and I'm going to just go into photos and show you the photo I'm talking about. So I took this photo of Jim receiving an award from this distinguished looking gentleman named Kip. And let's say that Kip asks me, I want that photo. Can you give it to me? And he happens to have this iPad. It's very easy to do using AirDrop. First, you do need to check that the AirDrop setting is on. So I go into, and mostly on the receiving device, but I want to show you on both. It's under settings and then general, and there's AirDrop. And you have three choices, receiving off, meaning it, AirDrop will not work on this device, or contacts only, or everyone. Now, I set it to everyone, because even though a person might be in my contacts, maybe they're using a different email on this device. And often, I am transferring a photo to somebody I just met. Here, I took this great picture of you. Do you want it? So I put that on everyone. And the receiving device is the main one that needs it. So settings and general airdrop. And this one is set to everyone. So here's all you do. Open the photo and you can do that from the photos. There's the photo I want. Tap the share button, the square with the up arrow in it. And AirDrop is right here in the middle. And if an active AirDrop iOS device is within range, it does need to be within a couple of feet, then it will show up right here. So there is Chris's iPad. I just tap on that and that photo zooms right across to this device. And it that's how easy it is to transfer a photo from one iOS device to another using AirDrop. This time, let's say that I have a photo stored on my iPad that I want to be on my iPhone. First, I have to make sure that my iPhone is set to receive AirDrop, settings, general, AirDrop, and I have it set to contacts only. Well, this is my iPad will certainly be in my contacts. So I open up the picture just using the native photos app. And here's the picture I want, my favorite diving picture. 
and you tap the share button, which on an, on this iPad is in the upper right corner, the square with the up arrow, and my iPhone appears in the drop AirDrop area. I just tap it, and that picture gets sent from this iPad to this iPhone using AirDrop. That really is so cool. Mm. So if you're in the same room and, you've, and you're using an iPhone and the person you want to give the photo to is on an iOS device, this, that's the way to go. <clears throat> when we've done this in seminar situations, it's always asked permission on the receiving end. And it didn't here. And I'm not, I'm, I'm assuming- I think it's because you're in the contacts. I'm assuming it's because both of them were actually my device. I, I think, I mean, it's been my experience other times that it doesn't actually send it until the receiver clicks OK, gives it permission. You, a lot of people know about AirDrop. Not so many people know about Android Beam. So you can do the same thing on Android devices. And here's the video for that. Hi, this is Chris Gold from Geeks on Tour, and this tutorial is about transferring a photo from one Android device to another using something called Android Beam. There's yeah. only, and so I am going to transfer from this smaller Samsung phone to this larger Nexus phone. There's only one prerequisite, and that is that the phone have the NFC, Near Field Communication, capability and that it be on. So let me show you what I mean. First, first on the Samsung, you have to go into settings, and then it's in the network area, and it's more networks. And it is NFC, allow data exchange when phone touches another device. You just tap on that and turn it on. And notice once it's turned on, you have the ability to use Android Beam, which is currently off. But if I tap that and it tells, it shows me exactly what to do. When it says touch a phone, it really means touch the two phones together. And it gives you some instructions here. That's what I'm going to do. I want it on. All right, I need to do the same thing on the receiving phone. And once you turn it on, it'll it'll stay on. So settings and more under networks and NFC, turn it on and Android Beam that is that is on. So Android Beam is what we're going to use. So on this smaller Samsung and, and notice this little N up in the notification bar. That is the icon for near field communication, NFC. So I just need to open a picture. I can get it from the gallery or I can get it from Google Photos. Doesn't matter. Just open, open any picture that I want to transfer this cool color pop one. And now literally all you do is touch the backs of the phones together, then the sending phone, the photo will get small and it will say touch to beam. I just touch, touch the photo and you'll see on the sending phone that there is a little arrow going up and on the receiving phone, you'll see an arrow coming down. When it's done, we can take a look at it there. So it has stopped. So now on the receiving phone, I'll take a look at my notifications. Beam complete, tap to view. And there is the photo on the receiving phone that I had on the sending phone. That is Android Beam to beam a photo or any content. It depends on what app you have open and what's showing on the screen on the sending device. All right.
<clears throat> and we did show this once before in episode 64 because it's when we came back from Cuba. And when we were in Cuba, we had no internet. So when we took a picture that a person on the trip wanted, this was how we figured out to do it was, with, great. was with the Android beam. Yeah. Okay. So that is the first way, if you are in the same room. Now, the second way is with texting. And I call it push and pull. You can either start by opening your texting app and then go get the photo. I call that pull because you're in the texting app and you go pull the photo in. Or you can start with the photo and push it out to your texting app. And we will demonstrate all this in, in a minute, but let me just go over the different types. And there's lots of different texting apps. You know, people, <laughs> one came with your phone, I'm positive. I'm positive that a texting app came with your phone, but it's probably very different from the texting app that came with somebody else's phone, even if they are both Androids. Now that green bubble is always the iPhone one. And what is texting really called? It's SMS. Every smartphone is capable of texting via SMX, SMS. And that is attached to the phone number of the phone. When you add a photo, it's called MMS. So SMS stands for short messaging system. Or I've also simple. heard it. I've also heard it called simple. Yeah, I looked it up. It's uh, most of them say short, but SMS. And when you insert a photo, it turns into an MMS, multimedia messaging system. But then there are even other things, just messaging systems that aren't attached to your phone number. They use data and they are attached to an account. So for example, Facebook Messenger is that little blue lightning bolt. WhatsApp is another, and these are all free, is WhatsApp is very popular in Europe. And then Google Hangouts is one that we use a lot. Emailing photos, same thing. You can start with your email and pull the photo in, or you can start with a photo and push it out to an email. Last, before we do our demo is, I think it's really important before you send a picture to somebody, ask them how they want it. It's, it's almost like a language. I mean, before you start talking, you have to ask what language do you speak? I mean, some people will say, oh, I sort always- Sort of English sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I always just use text or others will say, I never use text, please email it to me. And others might, you might not even know their phone number, or their email, but your Facebook friends and they use Facebook Messenger all, all the time. The time. So that's, and, and my favorite way, of course, is Google Photos. But I have come to learn that if I send via Google Photos to somebody who doesn't use Google Photos, yes, it does work, but there's a couple other steps and it ends up, you know. And they don't like it. Yeah, they're, they're not <laughs> happy if I send using Google Photos and they are not a Google Photos user. So ask before you send and send it the way they want it. All right, I'm first gonna demo on an iPhone. And first I need to take a picture and I'm gonna use texting. I'm gonna push and pull. I'm gonna use email and push and pull. And then I'll show you WhatsApp also. So first I need to take a picture. <laughs> My favorite subject. And now, so we're gonna look at the phone. And a lot of people asked, well, how do I send a photo right away? Well, there, I just took the photo. I'm still looking at the camera, but there's the photo I just took. Now I could also open up the Photos app and get to here. But if I just took it, I might do it that way. 
And then you just tap the share. You should have told me to clean up the studio. The, ba <laughs> the background, yeah. <laughs> One rule of photography, be aware of the background. <laughs> so I can tap on share and I want to text this. Now it's wondering, might I want to send more than one photo? So I could go over here and send, you know, send another photo just by tapping on it and selecting it. But that, you well, know, okay. And then, and then you tap next. And now here are all my choices. I can do it via AirDrop, but not to an Android device, I guess. That's can't. for sure. And I want to send this to Jim. So I'm going to use texting. And on an iPhone, the main texting app is this green bubble. All right. So then you need the phone number. So I'll put in, and or you could choose from your contact list. But I want you to see if you're if you're in front of somebody that you don't know, they're not in your contact list, all you need to do is ask for their phone number. And I'm going to add another one. Bill, who is on, Olive Cousin, who is on the call with us, gave me his phone number. And I can put that in, not on my, so. <laughs> All right, now uh, that's the one that says, okay, send this. And it should be sending those two. Now, because I selected two, it might take a little bit, but we should hear a little ding. I think I heard it. And then in a minute, we'll go over to Jim's phone and show you what came through. So that's texting. All right, so here we go. I got a beep on Jim's phone. The text has been received. Now, how do I email it? Now, on the email, I'm going to show you the push. I mean, the pull method. So the push was what I just did. I opened the photo, tapped share, and told it which way I want to share. Now I'm going to open up the email. And I'm still going to use the native Apple mail app rather than Gmail. I would normally use Gmail but I'm going to use just the Apple mail and start a new message with this little pencil icon. And now I have to have the person's email. So I am sending. So <laughs> Bill says that he got both pictures. I am sending to Jim and he is in my contact list and I'm just going to say photo. Now, here's what, since I don't normally use this app, it took me a while to learn that to, because there, there's no button, you know, where's the button I need to attach an email? I Googled it and found that you double tap, you double tap to get these options, one of which is insert photo. And well, that's pretty obscure. Yes, it was. It was, I've, I, yes, it was. So now I was in the email, I attached the photo and I tapped send. And usually the Apple mail has one more step and it didn't do it. So let me try doing the, the push method. So I open the photo and I choose a different photo how about that one? And I share and mail and Jim and photo and send. There, that's what I expected to see. And I know it. And this is only if you're using the Apple email app. It asks you before it actually sends it whether you want it resized. You know, actual size of this one is 580K, large, medium, or small. So if you want it to go fast, you'd tap a medium or small, and that sends it via email. 
Okay, and the last thing to demo on the iPhone is WhatsApp. So WhatsApp is another app. You may, if I just choose a photo and say share, these are all my possible options. And if you want to send via WhatsApp, you must have the app. Only apps that you have installed on your phone will show up here. But now I know I have WhatsApp and it's not showing up, but there's a more. And there it is. There it is. And I just don't use it very often. So, for example, we do have a friend in Europe who I know that that's the way he likes to communicate mm -hmm. always with WhatsApp. So I would send it using WhatsApp. And yeah, there he is. And next. Now I'm not, and I would just tap send then. And there's a bunch of other stuff here you can do. But he's he would say, what? <laughs> so I'm, what? I'm, I'm not actually going to send it. But that's how you would do it. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now we're going to demo on the Android. <sighs> and it's really all the same stuff. You just need to know that the share button looks different. On the Android, you can... Take a photo and share it with that. You can push it to a text message by using that share button. Or you can start a text and include the photo. And we'll do that this way. So this is Jim's Android phone. Take a picture of me. <laughs> All right. How's our background this way? <laughs> Not too bad. It looks a little cloudy on your side. but So, <laughs> so he's taking a picture. I can't talk while I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a picture. And now you realize that we could not use the Android Beam or the iOS um, Apple transfer. What's the word? <laughs> I forget. Uh, because... Yeah. Because we're the airdrop, thank you. Because we're going between Android and iPhone, so we cannot use a direct <laughs> uh, I don't know what that was. I don't <laughs> Some other. So here's the photo that he just took. I mean, we're still in the camera app, and there's the photo he just took. And we could tap the share and text it to somebody by opening up your and the text app that you use on this phone is hangouts right that's what that phone wants to use yeah. it is a google phone and google hangouts seems to be what it wants to use so i'm going to do it just the other way around than i did on the iphone i'm going to open hangouts first and now this is jim's phone he's going to send this to me, to my iPhone, we need to back out here to the top level and just tap a plus. And it asks another question. Are you making a new video call, just a new chat, or an SMS? So we're doing an SMS. And you could put the phone number, but I'm also just in his in his contacts. How did you get in my contacts? Okay. So that's good. I messed up. You did. So actually, let's do it with the... I don't know my iPhone's number. Okay, we have another little <laughs> issue here because I don't use the phone number that came with my iPhone. I use a Google Voice number, but... That's all right. We'll just send it to the Google Voice then. Three. Okay. Now everybody and has check. your number. Yeah. Good. And now I can blur that out. Like, so <laughs> then we check it. Now, how do we get a photo? So here is 
where the message is going to be entered and here are all the buttons. So what does this button do? The one that looks like a picture of mountains. You tap it and now you see the pictures. There's the picture I want. And we can send it. Shall we include uh, another person as well? Yeah, I'm just going to send it. So you just tap that little, I think that looks like a paper airplane. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of, yeah. And that send. means send. So that is being sent to my phone. It says it's uploading. It's uploading. And now it's gone. And I heard it hit on yours. Yep, it hit, hit on mine, definitely. And the same thing with email. Now, this time we're going to use Gmail because this is an Android phone. Gmail is it. And once again, I can open up the email and pull the photo in, or I can open up the photo and push to the email. And you can see we've already been testing this. <laughs> so, and I put in my email address and subject is photo. And now how do I go get, there's no button that looks like a picture. Attach. So the, the paper clip is how you attach. And it's a file, you know, a photo is a file. And it's showing up right here. But you see why I think the push method is easier? I think it's a lot easier to to be looking at the photo you want to send to somebody. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it's just putting everything <clears throat> on its head. Back in the old days when we just had computers, the pictures were on the computer, and we opened up our email, and then we attached whatever and sent it out. This puts it the other way around. So I'm going to push do it the other way pull. around. Push versus pull. I like push. I'm going to open up his photos. And Google Photos is the gallery app on a Pixel phone, which is what this is. Tap on the picture. Tap share. And Gmail. And, and it's shows up right in the email. You can address it to whoever you want and tap send. Hmm? Much easier. And photo and send. The paper airplane sends it. Then last is, so you've received Let's go take a look at Jim's email. He has received a photo from me. Two photos, actually. Let's go get the other one. Yeah, so he received this photo from me. But is this photo on this device? Not yet. <laughs> or no. <laughs> right. It is it, not on that device. It's in the envelope. Right. That came this, with the email. I can see it, but I'm only really looking at it, just a piece of it. Yeah. So if you look in your photos, that photo of you that I sent to you is not there. Yeah. So how do you get it there? You open the email where it exists and look for a button. <laughs> and if you don't find a button, look at a menu. But I see a button right there that looks like save, download. Yep. yep, that would be my guess. So you just tap that. And the one right next to it is Google Drive. So I could save it right to my Google Drive and it wouldn't be on this device, but it would be available in my account in Google. No, it didn't, there we go. Didn't have any confirmation, but it, it, it took a second. Now, if I go look in his photos, there it is. So now the photo that got sent to him in an email is now on his device in his photo library. And some apps library. require the photo or the file to be on your device before you can do anything else with it. So it's, it's nice right, to have right, it there. Right, right, right. It's nice to have it. Now, if you just wanted to see it, then opening up the email, looking at it, that's, 
That's fine. You're good enough. Right. But if you want to have it, then you need to save it out of the email and out of a text message. Oh, and we didn't do show Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger. And I love Facebook Messenger. I really don't. For me, don't text me. Don't email me. <laughs> Emails don't get buried. Text, I don't just, I just don't use it very much. But Facebook Messenger, I really like that. And I saw you have it here. Where'd it, where'd it go? What do you got? Facebook Messenger. There it is. There it is. It's this blue lightning bolt. So Facebook Messenger. And what's nice about it is you just kind of only have a few people that you work with in Facebook Messenger and you should be able to find like, so here is me, Christine and Debbie, some another person. And this is what we use anytime that we want to send a picture to each other or leave a message. Mm -hmm. So how would you send a picture? You would tap on the little camera and you would have, you have your choice then to either take a new picture or to look at your existing pictures and, and send one of them. But then in case you're chatting with somebody on Facebook Messenger and you decide you want to call them, you don't have to close and go to your phone. There's a phone right there on Facebook Messenger. Even a video call right there on Facebook Messenger. So, and the same thing with WhatsApp. So both WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and Hangouts are complete communications devices. Mm. Well, WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, right? And so is Facebook Messenger. <laughs> so that's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. So and there's more really coming every it. day. Mm -hmm. But hopefully in all of those different things, you saw what would work for you as to sending a photo to somebody else or having one sent to you. Now, let's see if on the iPhone, I just, I didn't show saving to, to the device. So if I received something in a text message, that is this one right here. <laughs> okay, this came from uh, Bill. So here is a photo that I received in a text message and it is not in my photos. If for some reason I want it, you have to open the picture, make it be the only thing on the screen. And then the only action button is the share button. And there we go. Save image. When you save image, now that is in my photos. There it is. Very cool. Good job. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> and there's lots, lots more ways. Lots, lots but, more. But that is, at least is the basics. Well, let's see. I don't see any questions, but I do see some nice comments. We've, <laughs> we've put a lot of stuff in this show, haven't we? <laughs> Yeah, I, th I thought, oh, you know, it's going to be really simple just to show them how to send with email or uh -huh. send with text. But then once I started getting into it, I said, oh, but there's there's this option and there's that option and this other option. So mm -hmm. which is, once again, why it's important to ask the person you're sending to right. what they prefer. That way, if you have it and they have it, it'll probably work. Right? Yep. Okay. Oh, so we sent out notice. We usually don't. We usually don't send out notice of the live show before the live show. We wait until after we know it went okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's recorded and we have the show notes to send out. And so we did get some questions. So let's just make sure that we answered people's questions. If I want to take a photo and send it immediately, can I do that? Hopefully you yeah. saw the answer to that question. How do you share a photo on a phone to someone on Messenger in Facebook? I have an Android phone and we did do that. While I was traveling, I stuck with iPhoto and WhatsApp. 
to share individual pictures back home. For friends who didn't want WhatsApp, so yeah. this points out exactly what we're talking about. I would use Gmail. Any way to send a photo album using Gmail? Well, here we go. You got to use Google Photos. <laughs> you know, Google Photos is the best way to send multiple pictures. I think so. Because what it's actually doing is just sending a link to your picture. So you're not taking up all that space in people's emails. And usually when you're on a trip and you want to share photos, you're not giving, you don't, mm, what do those people want with your photos? They don't, they just want to see them. Right. So Google Photos shared albums is really the best way for that. I would like to know how to send photos from my phone to my PC. Now that's a completely different question. And no, we did not deal with that. And I'll just say, you know, very quickly, you would either cable your phone to your computer. Mm -hmm. That's an easy way. And that usually works. Or you would use a cloud <laughs> storage and transfer like Dropbox. And we have a video on that or Google Drive mm -hmm. or Microsoft OneDrive. And, and that a lot of tools available to you. Yeah. Is there a way to reduce the size of the photo on the phone before it's sent? Some of the one and a half to two megabyte ones take a long time to send attached to a text. I can do it on my regular camera, but haven't figured out how on my phone. Now that's why I made sure to show that option in Apple email. When you send a photo via Apple email app, it asks, how do you want to size it? That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Without that, you have to have another app. So you just Google for a photo resizing app. But another point to make is some messaging apps resize them automatically and you don't even know it. So you got to be careful there that your photos don't lose resolution. Cause if you, if you like post it to Facebook and then download it from there and then text it, it has been reduced in resolution every step along the way. And you're going to get a lot of blurriness. Yeah. So if, if size is a concern to you, you know, pay attention. All right, I'm done. Wow. So I have an app of the week this week, and this week it's Tasty by BuzzFeed. You've been seeing these, if you're on Facebook at all, you probably see these recipes where they put a bowl down and everything goes into it and it goes real fast. Well, that's what this thing does. I love those. I do too. And it's just like a, a cooking coach. Thousands of recipes are right there at your fingertips. I have a tablet now that I'm keeping in the kitchen, and I haven't decided how I'm going to mount it yet, but it's going to be there. But step-by-step step instructions, I'm the cook in the family, typically. And it's great because you can filter. It's a good cook. <laughs> I'm you, a lucky girl. Yeah, you can you can filter by ingredients or time of day or holidays or any of that stuff. It's actually pretty cool. And step-by-step -step instructions to give you what you want there. And it is, I mean, recommendations if you're a vegetarian. One of the questions that asks right away, are you a vegetarian? It'll hide all the meat dishes so you don't have to put up with that. That's not me. I'm a carnivore. But it, it is really, really, really nice so, to have that capability. So if you're, if you like recipes, if you like uh, cooking, and I, I love cooking, and I'm always looking for something different to do, and look at that rating on the Apple store, on the Apple apps store, 4.9 out of five. That is pretty amazing. Uh, and millions, <laughs> millions of downloads. So that's, that's very impressive. And now you as, keep, you don't need this app on your phone everywhere you go, but no. you put it on the tablet that's in the kitchen. Right. Now, if you travel, you can show it to someone. I did put it on my phone, but yeah, I have it on a tablet or you can put it on an iPad if you have one in the kitchen. We have an extra one. And that's what I use in the kitchen to deal with it. Okay. 
So we want you to see our website, geeksontour.com. Click on the weekly class menu and scroll down to see all the archives. <laughs> uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com and search for Geeks on Tour or put in Geeks on Tour TV. And don't forget to click on that little bell for notifications. Okay, we have a one question there. I All see. right. Let's see. What's the best way to get a picture from Google Photos? All right. To my from Google Photos to my pictures file on my desktop. Okay. Number one, you know that you can see that picture from your desktop by going to the website photos.google.com, right? And then you can just open that photo and click the three dot menu and download to your computer. So that's, that's the way I do it. But realize that that will be that high quality, slightly compressed photo. So if you want it to go directly, you would need to cable your phone or use something like, like Dropbox. Okay. Or drive. <laughs> and I just want in in the book, in This is Geek's Guide to Google Photos, in the chapter on Google Drive, there is, and if you're a Google, if you're a Geeks on Tour member, you have access to the ebook on our website. And in chapter 13 about Google Drive, syncing your Google Photos library down to your computer. There's the step by step in here. Okay. All right. Did you learn something? You can transfer a photo from one phone directly to another. For Apple iOS, this feature is called what? AirDrop. Good job. And for Android, <laughs> what's it called? Android Beam. <laughs> All right. A text message is referred to as SMS. When you text a picture, it's called what? A, photo text, B, MMS, C, MP, message photo, or D, SMMS? B, MMS, multimedia, multimedia messaging system. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. True or false, before you can add it, Add, before you can text a photo to someone, you must open your text messaging app. False. You can open the photo, tap the share button, and then choose your text messaging app. Okay. The best way to send a photo to a friend is A, texting, B, Facebook, C, whichever way they use, or D, email. C whatever they use. So since you're the one that is the learner, you can learn to use what they like rather than putting it on them to learn how you're doing it. <laughs> Good. Google Photos has many more ways to share photos. Learn more in chapter 10 of Mrs. Geek's Guide to Google <laughs> Photos, available excellent. on Amazon. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That looks like Ah, oh, Bill says Karen already has put Tasty, the app of the, of the week, on her phone, and she says it might be dangerous. A dangerous <laughs> app. <laughs> Start cooking. All right. We'll be over for dinner. So, Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows? Geeksontour.com and Weekly Class. And the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters. Geeksontour.com, and the menu item is blogs and news. And why do people pay $60 a year to join Geeks on Tour? Because they like to learn. They know there's a lot there, and they can ask questions if they're a member, and they get all of our ebooks if they're a member, and they get all the written notes. If you like these shows, you'll love the written notes, and you need to be a member. And some of them... Pay us just to say thank you for all that we offer for free. <laughs> all right. Next time, next week, 
You're going, you said you're going diving. Yeah, but that's in the morning. Maybe I'll I'll come back. You just do all the work on the show and yeah. I'll just come in and, oh, okay. and, and look good for the show. <laughs> what do you think? As long as you bring lobster. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for this week's show. What does this button do? I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we're Geeks on Tour. We hope to see you next time. Keep pushing those buttons. Don't Just touch keep that. at what does this button do? How about this one? How Don't, about this one? Don't I touch like that. pushing your buttons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it too. Yeah, yes, you can. <laughs> we'll see you next time.